Hello and welcome to the second part of my League of Legends roundup for July 3rd, recovering the LCS. Um, I had completely overlooked the fact that next week I'm off for the LEC and LCS. Uh, both regions won't have games, which honestly is a pleasant surprise, I would say, because it's really hard to get all these videos out and maybe give me a weekend to kind of recharge and think about how to attack the second half of the split um, in a more, you know, time management sort of way. So, if you haven't watched these videos before, because this is a different video than the first part, uh, I take notes, save me the time in the instance you miss the game. These notes aren't necessarily for you to read, but for me to read to you. Um, so, you don't have to go back through a VOD or whatever. So, Dig vs. TSM started us off. Um, TSM would take a Hextech, and we get our first fight at Rift Herald at 9 minutes. Dig securing the Herald, but it being a fight 2 for 2. TSM would then take a Mountain. At 13 minutes, Dig would win a fight in the jungle 2-0, as well as Gamsu would solo kill Huni in the top lane, Gamsu on a Gragas, Huni on a Nar. Um, and that would end laning phase at 16 minutes, Dig up 5-2 and kills, Gold's tied. Dig would then take a Cloud, go top lane and get a kill. TSM would go to Cloud Soul Point. In 23 minutes, Dignitas would take a Baron after winning a fight 5-2, Neo and Blue with doubles, giving them a 4.5k gold lead. Blue ends up being MVP on the Azir. He's played really great Azir today. I mean, his shuffles were on point. He was key in the team fights, dealing a ton of damage. Um, TSM would defend their base 3-3 at 26 minutes. Huni and River exchanging doubles. So when Dig reset, they're up 14-7 and kills at 27 minutes. Blue was 4-0 and 5. At 28 minutes, the game would end with Dig winning a fight in the River 5-1. Blue and River both with doubles. Final score you see here, 21 to 8. The next game, EG vs. Golden Guardians had the most eccentric drafts we've seen in a long time. And I don't normally do this, but I'm going to do it for this one. So, in top lane it was normal. We had GP for Impact and Sej for uh, uh, Licorice. In the jungle, though, Inspired pulled out a cane. Yeah, our first cane of the year. And um, our second Zack sighting. Zach obviously is a, a meta champ in 12.12. .12. I mean, not a meta champ, but will enter the meta possibly. Zach versus Kane in the jungle. Zach for Pride Stalker. In mid was Swain and Yone. Um, Seraphine versus Senna. And uh, Ole was on our Yasuo. So it was actually Golden Guardians running the G2 comp from a couple weeks ago, except with the Zach and um, a Sej. So, at 3 minutes, the game started with EG going top lane and getting a kill. Golden Guardians would take an Infernal. EG would dive top lane again at 7 minutes. Um, a Blaze Olive would solo kill Jojo Pune. A Blaze Olive on the Yone. Jojo Pune on the Swain. EG would dive top a third time at 10 minutes. Um, go across the Rift and steal the Ocean. At 13 minutes, laning phase ends. EG up 3-1. 3k gold inspired is dominating and ensuring that Licorice is in a deep hole. At 15 minutes, EG go top lane again. So fourth time they went top. At 17 minutes, Golden Guardians take a mountain after winning a fight 4-0. They would get a kill bot lane. EG would get a couple kills in top, 2 for 1 at 22 minutes. EG would secure a mountain at 23 minutes, 3 for 1. And at this point, EG took the kill lead 9-8. And Inspired was 5-1-3 and three on the cane. Um, at 25 minutes, EG would win a fight 2-0, start the Baron, get pushed off at 1-0, and then go back to it and finish it, giving them a 4.5k gold lead. And they would end with the Baron through bot lane 4-0, Inspired with a double, final score 16-8, as um, Inspired's Kane dominates the game. Who would have thought? Game 3, C9 versus FlyQuest. FlyQuest, Afromu played a game, like it looked like it was 20, what, 2018 out there? Um... I mean, just truly remarkable. Um, and I'm surprised it didn't actually bite them in the butt, given that um, he got so many kills. So at three minutes, FlyQuest get a 2v2 kill. And then they would do it again a minute later. Uh, C9 would go mid. FlyQuest would take an Infernal 1-0, clearly with all this Pryo and Bot. Fly would then go mid, take a Mountain. And at 15 minutes, they're up 4-1 and 2.5k gold on C9. Afromu was 3-0-1 on Abram. At 16 minutes, there'd be an exchange of kills, one for one in top. FlyQuest would go to Hextech Soul Point. At 22 minutes, 
FlyQuest get a pick to be able to take Hextech Soul. Philip would solo kill Jensen in the side lane. Philip on a Jace. Jensen on a Yasuo. Fly would go bot at 25 minutes for a kill. They'd get a pick at 28 minutes, which allowed them to take the Baron, gave them a 4.5k gold lead. Then they went over to Elder, got a kill, took the Elder, and then would end with Baron and Elder at 30 minutes through um, a 5-0 teamfight win. Johnson with a Quadra on Jinx. Final score 15-2 as FlyQuest really pulled out quite an upset. I'm, I'm surprised. This was a game like, I, I've said it before, I talk about the lead into CLG. Um, I've said it all about CL, I've said this about CLG all split long. You know, you got to do what FlyQuest did. Sneak some wins early on in the split with weird off meta picks that can get you into the playoffs. But this draft by FlyQuest was standard and they won, which was a big deal. That's, that is a massive thing for me, at least looking at this team. C9 might have had an off game, but the fact that FlyQuest was able to beat them in, in the fashion they did with a meta um, comp is a pretty big deal. CLG versus TL. Um, CLG would start off by getting a kill bot lane. They pulled out the Amumu in the support role. Uh, TL would take a Cloud 1-0, then go top lane and get a kill, and then they would take an Ocean. So TL start really coming back here. One for one, they would get the ocean, and laning phase ends at 15 minutes. TL up 3 2, 1k gold. TL then get a pick, go to Mountain Soul Point. At 20 minutes, they win a fight in mid 3 1. Han Sama with a double. Uh, 24 minutes, TL would take a Baron, winning a fight 5 0. Bwipo with a triple. Bjergsen with a double. That gives them an 8.5k gold lead. Uh, they would then take the Mountain Soul pretty much simultaneously. They won a fight in mid 1 0 and started to push. And finally ended at 27 minutes, 5-1 through top. Bjergsen and Bwipo both with doubles, final score 17-4. Bjergsen was MVP because in the mid, early to mid game, he played a key role in these fights, dealing a lot of damage and securing um, summoner spells from the opponent and played a big role in that way, which doesn't necessarily score, show up on the score sheet um, on the basic scoreboard. But um, his swing was very impactful and got TL into a position where they could win. Game 5, Immortals and 100 Thieves. Not a lot's written here in black because there wasn't a lot of action outside of objectives. Everything was objective-oriented except the final push by 100 Thieves. So, uh, 100 Thieves would take a mountain before we actually had first blood, which would occur at 14 minutes when 100 Thieves would take an Infernal, winning a fight 2-0, someday with a double on a Kali. Um, and that would be the only kills throughout laning phase, which would end at 18 minutes, 100 Thieves up those two kills and 2k gold. At 20 minutes at the next Drake, 100 Thieves would go to Ocean Soul Point, winning the fight 3-0, someday with another double. Then, six minutes later, 100 Thieves would win a fight 2-0, someday with another double, to take Ocean Soul. At 27 minutes, so a minute later, 100 Thieves had Pryo over Baron, obviously after just winning this fight and taking Soul. And they win a fight 4-1, Abadage and FBI with doubles in the jungle, to secure the Baron and gave them a 8.5k gold lead. And then they would end with that Baron, 100 Thieves, 4-2, FBI with a double at 30 minutes, final score 15-3, just real clean game out of 100 Thieves, following their win over, um, I believe it was TL yesterday, so a very big week out of 100 Thieves as they try and, you know, jostle for position at the top of um, NA. I mean, EG right now holds down the fort, um, but, you know, I think 100 Thieves have something to say as well as TL. So that's kind of the deal here um, going into the break. So I guess for the next week, it's just going to be LPL and LCK um, roundups, which is okay with me. Um, comment down below with your opinions. How do you think these teams look going into the break? Who do you think has the most to work on? Thank you for watching. Like the video if you like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Because regardless if these guys aren't playing or not, I have daily content. I have three videos that are going to go up over the next three days each, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So, oops, hit the uh, notification bell so you get notified of when those go up, and thank you for watching.